Gunsmoke, brought to you by Chesterfield, America's most popular two-way cigarette. What a pair. Chesterfield king size at the new low price. Chesterfield regular. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm not, Chester. I'm looking for a cup of coffee. Thought I'd go into Delmonico's here. You want to join me? Well, sure, I'd like to, but maybe I'd better go on down to the depot. Oh, what for? The mail. I never got there at noon. That's why I thought you was going now. Well, I don't care about the mail, Chester. Yeah, but come to think of it, you did start out at noon, didn't you? <laughs> what happened? I got robbed. Got robbed? Yes, sir. Over at the Alpha Oh, you've been gambling all afternoon, huh? Not all afternoon, Mr. Dillon. I watched the game for about an hour before I set in. <laughs> well, you should have gone on watching it. Oh, yes, you're right. Absolutely right. Cost me my last $10. But I thought sure I'd win this time. Oh, why? Because it was my last $10 for the month. I had to. <laughs> well, that's about as good a reason for winning as any, I guess. Yes, sir. You know, there's just too much money for my pay, Mr. Dillon. Anyway, I... Might have won if I hadn't got cheated. Oh, it's a crooked game? The fellow dealing was crooked, and I know he was. But I sure didn't want to start no argument with him. No, sir, not him. Well, why? Who was he? I don't know. Some stranger calls himself Sam Kircher. What? Sam Kircher. You know him? Oh, but I've heard of him. Who is he? He's a gunman, Chester. Oh, I recognize that. That's why I didn't make no fuss about his crooked dealing. Well, you were smart. Kircher's the kind of man who enjoys killing. He's got a big reputation for it out in Arizona. Well, what's he doing here, I wonder? I don't know, Chester. But let's go find out. That's him, Mr. Dillon. Just getting up on the table over there. I guess the game's finished. Funny you'd tell you his name, Chester. A man like that usually doesn't talk so much. No, sir, but I didn't think nothing about it at the time. I... Well, he's coming over here at the bar, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Glass of whiskey, bartender. Hello, Kircher. Where have you been, Dillon? What? took you long enough to get here. It's been a half hour since I cheated your friend here out of his money. Cheated me, you see? I told you he did. But how do you know I was a friend of Mr. Dillon? I asked. Smart of me, wasn't it? What'd you ask for? What difference did it make? Never mind, Chester. What are you doing in Dodge, Kircher? I got tired of Arizona. Why? Nobody left worth bothering about there. You mean there's nobody left worth your killing, is that it? Man can get rusty facing down bums and green horns, Dylan. What's the matter with Tombstone? Wyatt Earp wrote me it's a lively town these days. Oh, too many of them Earps. And they got Doc Halliday with them, too. Man be a fool to ride into that camp. Well, you draw a line somewhere, don't you? One man at a time is good enough for me, Dylan. <laughs> I ain't greedy. Now, you're kind of greedy about money. What do you mean? 
You admitted cheating Chester out of his $10. I had a reason for that, Dylan. How did you? Yeah. He was hanging around watching the game, and I found out who he was. So when he sat down, I took him. I can deal faster than that. I wanted him to know and run tell you about it. Why? I wanted to meet you, Dylan. Always like to get to know the leading citizens of a place. You got your own way of going about it. Are you objecting? Ordinarily, I object to cheating at cards, yeah. But with you, I don't think it matters much. Now, what are you doing in Dodge, Kircher? I was nearby, up in Colorado. I heard about you there, Dylan. You've got quite a reputation. I'm a lawman, Kircher, not a gunman. I don't care about my reputation. I do. Now, you came here to kill me, huh? That's what I came for, Dylan. Kircher, I'm going to tell you something. What? Men like you are as useless as wolves. I hate every one of your kind. And that'll make it easier for you to fight me, Dylan. I'll meet you out in the plaza, sundown, tomorrow. What a pair. What a buy. We're talking about king-size Chesterfield at the new low price. And Chesterfield regular. They're the quality twins. The best cigarette ever made. Either way you like them, you get the same highest quality. Same low nicotine. The same wonderful taste and mildness. A refreshing smoke every time. So change to Chesterfield. America's most popular two-way cigarette. Buy a carton today. You get highest quality with king-size Chesterfield at the new low price. You get highest quality with Chesterfield regular. What a pair they are. They satisfy millions. They're best for you. thinking about sundown all day long. I feel terrible about this. Oh, why? It isn't your trouble. Yes, sir, I know, but if I hadn't sat in that game yesterday, things might be different. Ah, uh, Sam Kircher have found me soon enough. That's what he said he came here for. I heard him, but I still feel guilty. What's the matter, Chester? You afraid he'll kill me? Is he really good? Well, he's beat a lot of men. You're going to fight him, ain't you? Ah, that's the worst part of this job, Chester, having men like Sam Kircher come around looking for another notch on his gun. There's nothing I can do about it. Well, you don't have to fight him, Mr. Dillon. No. No, I don't. I could avoid it. How? Run away. Oh, Look out the window here, Mr. Dillon. The plaza's plumb deserted. Sure. Guess the word got around. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what? He's coming. Sam Kircher. Walking across the plaza. <coughs> well, it must be sundown. Yes, sir, it is. Uh, don't come out the door, Chester, or you'll be behind me. I'm only going as far as the boardwalk. I won't. I'll stay right here. But if anything happens, then I'm coming out, by golly. Don't be a fool. Come on out in the street, Dylan. What you standing there for? What's the matter, 
scared you. You scared? Why don't you come down here, Dylan? There's a lot of people hid out watching us. Been a long time since a marshal was killed and dodged. I don't want to hear your talk, Kircher. Let's get this over. <laughs> Mr. Dillon? Well, he didn't hardly have his gun out before you hit him the first time. I was watching him. I didn't wait for him. I drew first. You did? Giving a man a chance to be arrested is one thing. Shooting down a killer is another. Yes, sir. This is nothing but slaughter. Brainless slaughter. Like I said, it's the worst part of this miserable job. <laughs> I guess it helped ridden the country of a man like Sam Kircher, shooting him down, killing him. But the trouble was that it made you feel like a part of his own senselessness when you did it. And everybody congratulating you afterwards and looking up to you. That didn't help any. That's one thing that got men like Kircher started off wrong in the first place. All the talk, all the admiration for gunfighters. Like with a kid I met at the Texas Trail one night a couple of months later. He was sitting with Kitty when I came in. Good evening, Matt. Tom. Oh, thanks, Kitty. This is Marshal Dillon, Pate. I know. I've seen him. Pate, huh? Well, I never saw you around before, Pate. He rode in yesterday, Matt. His first time. Good thing, too. He's only 16. Yeah, that's young. Especially for a town like Dodge. Where are you from, Pete? On the west of here. A uh, cowboy? I was. That's what I've been arguing with him about, Matt. He says he's through being a cowboy. Oh, uh, is that so? Why? I got other things to do. Like what? I'm going to buy me a gun, Marshal. A gun? Sure. And I'm going to learn to use it, too. A man's no good without a gun. Oh? Pate, you start carrying a gun and you get handy with it and you'll grow up to be a U.S. Marshal or something. No kidding. I mean it. I never saw a man start using a gun yet that he didn't have to go on using it the rest of his life, however long that is. Tell me something, Pate. What uh, gave you this idea? What's wrong with it? Everybody carries a gun. Of course, everybody can't use them real good. But I'll learn. I'll get good. Good as you are, Marshal. Oh? Sure. Maybe even better. Who knows? That's what I mean. It all leads to nothing but getting killed. Who cares how good you are with a gun? There's always somebody better. She's right, Pete. Uh, why don't you forget about this and go find yourself a job out in the country somewhere and go to work, huh? I'm going to have to, Marshal. I'm plumb broke right now. Oh, good. That's fine. You know anybody around here? Nope. Well, look, I'll tell you. Emmett Bowers is due in town tomorrow. He runs a big outfit, and he can always use an extra hand. You meet me in the lobby of the Dodge House tomorrow morning, and, well, we'll have a talk with him. Okay. I better be going now. i got to find me a place to sleep. Oh, uh, Pete. Uh, here. Here's a dollar. You, you can pay me back later. No. No, I couldn't take it. No, thanks. Good night. Good night, Kitty. So long, Pete. Good night. <laughs> He's got a lot of pride, that kid. Yeah. But it's mostly the wrong kind. Hmm, maybe. Well, you'll probably forget about this gunfighting business once he's back out in the country where he belongs. Well, I hope so. There are enough gunmen around already. Oh, Pate's all right. Don't worry about him. No, I won't, Kitty. Unless he comes back someday. Pate was at the Dodge House next morning, and we found him at Bowers there and got him a job right off. They rode out of town together that evening, and I watched him go. 
hoping that a lot of hard work would give Pete something to think about besides becoming a gunfighter. Anyway, I'd done what I could, and I forgot about it. Until a couple of months later, when I happened to go into Jonah's General Store... Marshal Dillon. Hello, Miss Jonas. Well, how come you're running the store? Why hadn't you heard, Marshal? Oh, no, heard what? My husband's got the ague real bad. I've been taking care of him and running the store, too. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that, ma'am. But how do you manage to do both? Well, I moved his bed into the storeroom out back. Matter of fact, Doc Adams is in there with him now. Huh? Oh, that poor man, Marshal. He's had chills one day and fever the next for nigh on to a week. Well, Doc, I'll fix him up. Doc can cure almost anything. I can cure anything but a liar, Matt. What? Oh, hello, Doc. Uh, I didn't know you were listening. I was listening. I heard what you said. And it was a long way from what you told me the other day. Why, what do you mean, Doc? Mrs. Jonas, he told me the only thing croakers were good for was performing autopsies and signing death certificates. <gasps> That's exactly what he said. Death certificate. Now, oh, don't no. let him scare you, ma'am. Nobody ever died of ague yet, doctor or no doctor. Oh, Matt, why aren't you out patrolling Front Street or keeping the peace somewhere like you're paid to do? <laughs> Man can't work all the time, doctor. Oh, he can. Uh, yes, well, I'll just remember that the next time you come hounding me out of bed in the middle of the night to patch up some bad man that you've just torn apart. Uh, when you're through here, I'll buy you a glass of beer, doc. It's awful hot today. No, I don't mind the heat. Uh, I'll I'll take you up on it, though. (laughs) Say, Mrs. Jonas, if your husband complains about his ears roaring, it's the quinine I gave him. So just don't worry about it. Oh, all right. Well, hello, Pate. How are you? I'm okay. Oh, uh, Pate, you know Miss Jonas here? Ma'am? Hello, Pate. And Doc Adams. How do you do? Doc? Pate's been riding for Emmett Bowers the uh, last couple of months. Oh, that's fine. Well, Emmett's a good boss, I've always heard. He's all right. They treating you okay out there? It's like any other job punching cows, Marshal. Short grub and long hours. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, what you doing in town? Did you come in with Emmett? No. I come in alone. Oh? You, uh, didn't quit, did you? I quit. I drew my time last night. Yeah, I was afraid so. Ma'am? Mm-hmm. I want me a six-gun and a holster and a belt. And all the ammunition the rest of my money will buy. Well, now, son, ain't you a little young to be carrying a gun? I'm 16. And if I'm old enough to do a man's work, I guess I'm old enough to live like a man. Live like a man? <laughs> you mean die like one, don't you, young fella? I ain't afraid to die. Mm. I don't know. I've dug bullets out of all kinds of men, young and old. And no matter how they talk, every one of them's been afraid. I get good enough, I'll do the killing. If I'm given a decent chance. Pate, tell me something. How'd you get started on all this in the first place? I don't mind telling you, Marshal. Now. Now? Now I got money for a gun. And I can start practicing. Oh, wait a minute. Is there some particular man you're after? Is that it? Yeah. That's it, Marshal. Well, who is he? You. Me? I'm going to fight you, Marshal. And I'm going to kill you if I can. Well, why? I never saw you before in my life till you came here. Pate's my first name, Marshal. So? My last name's Kircher. I heard about how you shot my brother, so I come here to take his place. Tate, Sam Kircher was nothing but a killer. He was no good. You drew first on him. What difference does it make? Your brother came after me for only one reason, to kill me so he could be a big man. You think I'm going to take a chance being killed for anything as brainless as that? There's rules to gunfighting, Marshal. He wasn't ready to draw. Where'd you get all these crazy ideas, kid? Who taught you that killing people is a game of some sort? My brother told me all about it a long time ago. Yeah, sure. Now, for him, it was a game. That's what was wrong with him. He'd have beat you if he'd have been ready. Pate, do you wait for a mad dog to bite you before you try to stop him? 
And your brother was ready. He rode into Dodge ready. Well, I'll be ready for you. In a few weeks, I will. You will, huh? Look, Pete, I've been handling a gun for years. What makes you think that you can go against me in a few weeks? Unless you're planning something else. No, Marshal, I'll never shoot anybody in the back. Not even you. You're not bad, Pete, but you sure got everything mixed up. Why? Because I'm only 16? You see what I can do, Marshal. You see. Well, what if I won't draw on you? I'll kill you anyway. Like you say, what difference does it make? All right. If you're going to act like your brother, I'll treat you like your brother. And when you come gunning for me, I'll shoot you down as fast as I did him. So go ahead and practice. Practice all you like. But when you face me, I'll have three bullets in you before you clear your holster. I don't care how old you are. Your best cigarette buy today is Chesterfield. There's Chesterfield king size at the new low price. And for your convenience, Chesterfield regular. What a pair. Either way, you get the taste and mildness you want. A refreshing smoke every time. Either way, you get highest quality, low nicotine. Buy a carton of Chesterfield. They're best for you. In regular or king size, you can get them either way. The best smoke ever made the Chesterfield you buy today. Smokers coast to coast are changing. It's a cinch to do. Here's all you have to say to get the one that's best for you. Chesterfield's for me. Chesterfield's for me. You just say it's Chesterfield's for me. If I thought getting mad would scare some sense into Pate Kircher, I was wrong. He went ahead and bought his six-gun. And every day he spent hours down by the Arkansas practicing with it. In a few years, that kind of concentration might have made him into a fair gunfighter. But as it turned out, he didn't get a few years. He didn't get more than about ten days. And those ten days got spent fast. One evening, I was sitting on the porch not far from the Texas Trail, watching the crowd push up and down Front Street. Oh, hello, Marshal. Hello, John. Matt. Matt. Oh, hello, Kitty. Matt, Chess is in the trail there, and he asked me to come find you. Well, why? What's the trouble? You know, Jack Rining... Yeah, I know him. Well, he's at the bar in there, and he's making fun of young Pate. Chester isn't sure how much Pate's going to take from him. Oh, Ryan, it's more than just a bully, Kitty. He's dangerous. Well, Chester tried to make him stop, but it didn't do any good, Matt. I hope Pate isn't fool enough to try to take him. Ryan, it'll kill him, sure, if he does. I tried to tell him he shouldn't be wearing a gun, but you know Pate. He won't listen to anybody. Yeah. Uh, you better wait out here. I aim to. Leave the kid alone, Ryan. He ain't bothering you none. Get out of the way, Chester. Everybody else, get out of the way, Come too. On, Mr. I'm giving you one more chance, Faith. You throw that gun away or you start using it. Go ahead and draw, Ryan. I ain't afraid of you. Okay. I will. No, don't do it, Ryan. No. Ah! <laughs> All right, shut up, everybody. My hand. Shut up. You busted my hand, Marshal. What'd you do that for? You think you're a fight? It's like shooting a man in the back. You, you ruined my hand. You're about to murder this boy, Ryan, and I should have shot you in the head. Now go on over to Doc's if your hand bothers you. It bothers me. It's it, it smashed. Good. I wonder how many lives that's going to save. Now go on, get out of here. I'm going. I'm going. 
You ruined me. That's what you've done. We'll see about this. Well, he'd have killed him, sure, Mr. Dillon. Pete never even got his gun out. Uh, that's true. I didn't. I kind of froze. I, I don't know why. Pete, Jack Reinen's the same kind of man your brother was, always looking to kill somebody. And if you still think it's a game of some kind, go on wearing that gun. And when the time comes, I'll see you buried with it. But that's all I'll do for you. All right, come on, Chester. Let's get out of here. Yes, sir. Marshal, M- Marshal, wait a minute. Marshal? Yeah. You saved my life just now. He sure did. One more second, you'd have had a bullet clean through you. I know that. But I don't understand. What don't you understand? Well, you, you could have let him kill me, and then I wouldn't be after you no more, would I? Not dead, you wouldn't. You, you saved the life of a man who sworn to kill you, Marshal. Yeah, that's right. Well, why'd you do it? Because you didn't have a chance with him, Pete. Not a chance. I'm kind of confused, Marshal. You are? I sure am. Now, well, it's about time. Now, maybe you'll figure it out now, Pete, if you give yourself half a chance. Uh, Marshal, I... I always could think better when I'm riding a horse. I'm going back to my job. Good. I'm glad to hear that, Pete. Would you do me a favor? Not sure. Well, punching cows will keep me so busy I won't have time to practice much. Would you hold on to my gun for me? What? Here. Yeah, sure I will, Pete. Sure I will. I'll keep it for you. For a long time, I hope. L and M goes king size. Yes, L and M goes king size. Now, L and M is king size as well as regular. Both have the same low price. Both have the miracle tip for the effective filtration you need. Yes, it's the filter that counts. And L and M has the best. You get much more flavor, much less nicotine, a light and mild smoke. Yes, this is it. L and M filters, just what the doctor ordered. Buy a carton, king size or regular, both at the same low price. L and M filters, America's highest quality and best filter tip cigarette. <laughs> Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Lawrence Dobkin, Vivi Janis, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in... Gun smoke. Next week at this same time, Chesterfield will bring you another transcribed story of the Western Frontier on Gunsmoke. This is the CBS Radio Network.